Welcome everyone to the final round of the Prague Masters 2024. We have Parham Maksud Lut playing with the white pieces against Bukesh. Always a fascinating encounter between these two fighters. Parham lost a heartbreaking game to Nodirbek in the 8th round. Will he manage to come back or will he face trouble in this game against Gukesh? It will have to be seen. Parham adjusts all his pieces before the game. Gets all the dust and the small hair. You know, generally you have uh, little threads of hair on the chessboard sometimes. He gets them out and opens with d4. And now Gukesh brings his knight out to f6. Gukesh scored a nice win against Vincent Keimer in the 8th round. So he is in good mood. e6 played. Knight comes out to f3. And now Gukesh pushes his pawn to d5. It's the queen's gambit declined. g3 played which is the Catalan. And Gukesh goes and checks on b4. This has been one of the main lines that Gukesh has played and even in this tournament he has gone for this against Nodirbek Abdusatarov with bishop e7. Parham puts his bishop on g2 and Gukesh castles his king. Parham will also castle and now an important moment as to how Gukesh will continue. c6 is the main move and he plays it. This is the closed Catalan and generally this leads to positional struggles. b3 played by Parham and Gukesh goes b6. Parham's idea is this very sophisticated maneuver to bring his bishop back to c1 and then to b2. Gukesh is not very perturbed. He goes knight bd7. He continues with his normal scheme of things and I think Parham also is enjoying this position just from the fact that not much theory, not fighting for opening advantage, just play normal chess, queen c2, bring your knight out to d2, try for e4 and so on. But while doing so, it feels like Gukesh is getting quick play, knight bd2, and I think the idea is to go rook c8 and c5. He goes directly c5. I was a bit worried on this long diagonal, but for, for now it seems okay. Rook c1 played by Parham. And now Gukesh brings his rook to c8. <coughs> Parham brings his queen back to b1. You can see the tension in the center is mounting. No one wants to clarify it. Finally, Gukesh takes on c4. And knight jumps in to take the pawn on c4. Can we push the pawn on b5? Yes. Pawn push, attacking the knight. The knight has to move. It goes to e5. And now, knight takes knight, Gukesh takes, <clears throat> and Parham takes the knight. Now, what you are angling at is the c6 square. If you take here, there is already knight c6 that has to be contended with. That's why queen b6 played. Parham plays this very nice move, rook c2, and rook c7 is on the board. Now, this move, rook c2, is a fascinating move that Parham has played because now after dc5, it's an amazing position for white. Gukesh made a mistake with rook c7. He had to play rook fd8, which would have given him a good position. And you can see the trouble now is that after bishop d6, his position is very precarious. Like rook takes rook, he has to take back with the queen. And you will see that the bishop opens up, this bishop is open, and white pieces are just more coordinated. At the same time, Parham gets the control of the c file. So everything is in white's, uh, white's favor here. Black is in definite trouble. Knight e5 played. There was also the possibility to jump in with rook c6. But knight e5, bishop goes back to b7. And now Parham goes and chops it off. Gukesh, if he takes queen b7, he has to live with the knight sitting on c6, which is a very nice square for the knight. So Gukesh takes his time and takes the bishop on e5. Now you can either take on e5 or take on b7. If you take on e5, queen b7, queen b2, this is a very nice position to play for black. But Parham decides to keep the other bishop. 
which is also an interesting decision because with the light squared bishop he is putting pressure on the b5 pawn bishop takes bishop queen takes bishop and in the catalan generally these pawns are quite weak and white has counterplay against them b4 played by gukesh and now the a5 pawn is weak you can see queen e5 instantly attacks the a5 pawn Gukesh plays queen d8 defending the pawn and then rook c4. Parham is slowly bringing up his rook, maybe rook d4, maybe swinging it over to the king side, we never know. h6, Gukesh makes a useful move but this position is terrible. You know, if you can get rook c5 and attacking this pawn, it would be really bad and Parham is enjoying himself. He goes king g2. Gukesh does go queen b6 and Parham simply brings his bishop back to f3. He's enjoying, maybe he'll go h4, g4, play on the king side. Queen d8, Gukesh waiting. The only thing is rook, d, rook c5 is met with knight d7, so you have to be careful while attacking the pawn. So he goes rook d4. The queen once again has to move. Gukesh takes his time and plays his queen to b6. Now can we enter in with the rook here? He goes rook c4, queen d8. Well, a draw would be like a dream come true for Gukesh here. He goes rook c6 and Parham is coming back from the rear. Rook e8 played. And now rook a6 is on the board attacking the a5 pawn. So the knight tries to block it with knight d5 and now h4 is just a very nice professional move. He goes e3 which is also cool. Well you don't cash in so quickly here. By the way e4 could be a nice move attacking the a5 pawn. But Parham is going for queen d4. He wants to get his queen to c5 and then attack the pawn on a5. And... Uh, Gukesh plays his rook to d7. Still hanging in there, waiting. Queen c5 played. We are on move 37. Both players are down to their last 4 minutes. Will Gukesh wait? He goes rook c7, giving up this pawn, but he has some devious idea on his mind. Is he going to sacrifice a piece? He gives up the pawn. Because now even take on d5 and then b4 pawn also would be hanging later. But knight e3, a knight sacrifice is on the board. Oh my god, but we are on move number 38. Two more moves under time control. Parham has two and a half minutes to figure out what's happening. He takes a knight check here. The king cannot go back to the last rank because then there is trouble with rook c1, rook c2. So he goes king h3. And now the 40th move, incoming queen d3 played. But bad timing for Gukesh because now Parham has... 30 minutes to figure out what the win is. He blunders with rook a7. In fact, the win was the very pretty check. Here, check. Queen a8, king h7 and bishop e4 winning the game. That was a massive win and massive miss by Parham Maksudlu. He didn't find it. He, in fact, thought for a great time, 24 minutes, and then played rook a7. What a unbelievable miss by Parham. You know, a player of his stature could find this move in literally one minute. But he missed it. He could have won the game. But now it's equal. He's still a piece up. But Gukesh is going after the white king. He wants to play f5, maybe g5, queen d8 check on the board. And now the king moves away. Rook takes the pawn here. And now h5 check just to lure the king away king takes h5 played by parham and now gukesh can take the bishop so materially it's now equal in terms of pieces but parham is two pawns up and that is not an easy position uh, for gukesh the only problem is parham's king is a little too exposed and can become a target for perpetual checks so first king g5 and gukesh can snatch one pawn here with queen takes e3, check. The king now moves to f5. Maybe another check 
could come in. Hmm. Check again. Gukesh leaves the queen. Because, you know, if he didn't give this check, white would simply slowly start grinding. Now, if you stop the checks and if the queen can somehow coordinate itself and come to the center, it would be completely winning for white. So, Gukesh, who's two pawns down, has to keep checking. And this is not at all easy. King d6. King e6 played. And the important point is not to take the pawn on h2 at the wrong moment because then you have queen h4 check and it is just a draw. So you have to time it correctly. Uh, sorry, queen h4 check and white wins. But you have to time it correctly in a way that the white king is far away. Like here, Gukesh is actually pressing the king to go far away. And then now that it's far away from the c5 pawn, you can actually go and chop this off. Beautiful. That is well calculated by Gukesh because after take, 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 king comes and chops the pawn and both sides queen at the same time. But Parham does play this check. He does play it. Gukesh takes, pawn takes. And here's the thing now. King h6, king g6. If you go king c6, king h5, king c5, king h4, king b4 and both sides queen and then white has an extra b pawn. But in fact, Parham goes after the G pawn, which is actually a very, very simple draw because after pawn takes, king takes the pawn, another pawn taken. Now, Gukesh is simply going to play king G5, taking the opposition. He glances at Parham as to why did you allow me such an easy draw? Well, Parham moves to F7. The, the opposition is going to be continued with king F5. The players get the new score sheet because 60 moves have been completed and unbelievably Parham Maksudlu has missed his chance to win this game. Gukesh miraculously escapes against the person who escaped in so many games here. This is just amazing play and especially that moment where Rook A8, Rook H8, Queen A8, Bishop E4 that will definitely go down as one of the most important tactics in this tournament. Parham offers a draw. Gukesh accepts it. Both the players smile to each other. They both know that Rook 8, Rook H8 was coming. Of course, they are so good. But in the heat of the moment, they did not find it.